So today we have an iPad board. Uh, this is an iPad Air and I'm going to go through a couple different things about replacing the dock connector. Uh, on this particular model the dock connector is soldered onto the board. Uh, now on a lot of models, the earlier models of iPads, the dock connector is replaceable by plugging it in. It has a socket that plugs into the board. However, on the newer models, uh, the majority of them are soldered onto the board. Now in doing this repair, there's a couple things you have to be careful about and uh, look out for. And I'm going to show you how to do it and, to, um, and what to look out for and, and to be careful about because you can pretty much uh, demolish your board um, and it will be trash thereafter. So um, the first thing is uh, when removing the replacement or re removing the uh, dock connector, uh, we have to remove some tape that's covering the socket as well as some a plastic piece here. So we're going to do that. I'll show you under the microscope what we're talking about. And I'll move the camera down so you can see. All right. So first of all, here's the front of the board, and we'll see. You see this plastic, uh, or this, yeah, this plastic uh, covering around the uh, connectors here. We're going to just remove that because if it does get hot, that can melt and just cause a big mess. So first, we're going to remove that, and then this plastic strip here. This is actually connected to uh, the dock cable. So we're going to remove that because we are going to be heating up this cable and removing it so if we do that uh, that piece is just going to melt as well and so uh, the things you have to be careful about is since we are going to be heating up this side of the board I'm going to go ahead and remove this piece of tape here you see how many con connections or uh, pads are there that we have to solder um, so since we're going to be heating up this area of the board what's going to happen is, is the heat is going to go through and so we don't want to heat up the board too much to damage these uh, these connectors over here which is your display connectors and your uh, digitizer connectors and your home button uh, these connectors but also this BGA chip here uh, if we heat the board up too much it's going to ruin this chip uh, and this chip is hard to replace because you see that this glue around the edge that's called underfill this is not only glue on the outside of the chip around the edge but it goes underneath the chip and in between all the solder joints all the solder pads there so that would be a pain to have to replace that and you don't want to have to do that so we're not going to heat the board up too much and we're going to avoid that alright so now we have removed all the tape and we are ready to desolder uh, the connector before we start adding heat to this what we're going to do is we're going to add some flux to these joints and we're going to put on some leaded solder I now have a filter. This is your smoke absorber. This removes all the, since I'm dealing with lead, it's best to have this to remove the lead from the air so that we're not breathing any of that stuff in. Uh, so when I turn this on, it is gonna be a little bit loud, and uh, but it is gonna save my lungs. So like I mentioned, I'm gonna add some flux to this and then I'm gonna add some leaded solder on top of that. So now we've added leaded solder to those joints, so now we're going to be able to melt this at a lower temperature. Instead of the um, lead-free melts at higher temperatures, we're talking about over 200 degrees Celsius. With lead, we're melting around 183 degrees Celsius. So we're going to um, set our hot air station to a temperature which is going to be um, lower temperature than we would if we were dealing with um, lead-free. 
Okay, so here you see I have this this Hakko vise. This is good for iPhone boards and iPad boards. It pretty much it weighs about I don't know weighs quite a few pounds, so it doesn't move around. And you can clamp boards down in there and set it up and, and work on it. However, I like to also use it if I have the board on the on the table like this uh, and I don't want it to move around. I just set the vise on top of the board and it keeps it from sliding around. So now what I'm going to do is heat up this uh, connection, these uh, these joints, melt it, and then remove the connector. You see how that took some time there? That did take some time, but we want to make sure and not use too much heat because, if, like I mentioned, if we heat that board up too much, uh, we're going to damage the board. So we added the heat slowly, and once you saw it removing or melting the solder, we then lifted the the uh, dock up really slowly. Now, if these joints aren't melted and you're lifting up the the socket you're going to pull these pads right off the board and you don't want to do that because then you'll have to run wires and it's going to be a mess so um, it's, it's important to make sure the solder is melted before you lift up and start removing the, the dock connector itself alright so now what we're going to do is we're going to add some more solder to these pads some leaded solder and get them ready for the uh, new dock connector Okay, now you'll notice, I'll show you this as well, you see on each end here we have a little golden square pad. Now that pad isn't anything but only for lining up, it's not for a connection or anything, but it's for lining up the new connector. So you'll see here on the new connector how there's these clear 
areas on each side. You have one here and one here and I'll show you. See how right here it's starting to show you can see the square through that area of the connector. So that's how you tell if you're lined up or not. So we'll get it lined up over here on this side. So this square is lined up now and now this square is lined up just like that. So what we're going to do is we're going to tack this down one here, we're going to get this lined up, get it, tack it down right here, and then we'll line up the other side and tack it. So first we're going to add some flux to the top of the connector. Make sure we have plenty of flux because that's what's going to help this to uh, get a good connection and solder correctly. And then turn my fit filter back on. Now we're going to line up the other side. There you go, got that tacked. And now we're just going to go one by one all the way across. See how the solder squeezes through when it melts? That's what you want. Like that. bright. You can't really see it, can you? Let's see. Turn that down. Alright, maybe that's a little bit better for you so you can see. Alright, so we're going to continue moving along here. So now we're going to add a little bit more flux to the area and we're going to go back over these with some more solder just to make sure we have a good connection.
Okay. So that is it. So that's how we do the replacement on the uh, dock connector. You want to make sure uh, that all the connections are soldered correctly, not bridging, not uh, not dry solder joints. We want to make sure that they're nice and flowed. Uh, so it's important to use the correct amount of flux. Uh, really, you can't use too much flux because it's going to keep that, that area uh, moist and uh, the solder is going to flow better when you use the correct amount of flux. Now if you're using not enough flux, uh, you're going to get dry solder joints and so it's going to be cracked. There's not going to be any connection between the two pads. So um, this one is completed. We have the new uh, dock connector on and the main reason that we did this is because the old dock connector was liquid damaged. Uh, inside here the joints or the, uh, the pins are corroded and uh, they were no longer making contact so we had to replace the dock connector. So that's how you do the dock connector replacement. Uh, if you have any questions make sure you leave some comments below. If you enjoyed the uh, content please leave us a like and uh, give us a follow so that we can uh, keep you up to date with uh, more videos that are coming in the future. Alright, hope you have a great day.